Let's talk about DPP-4 inhibitors and how they work, plus some pharmacology. Here's everything we'll talk about in the video, timestamps down below, and a short quiz at the end. To understand this class of drugs, let's do a quick overview of DPP-4 inhibitors. DPP-4 inhibitors stand for dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitor. And the key word here is inhibitor. And we have to know that it blocks something because that allows us to remember how they work. This class of drugs are used for type 2 diabetic patients. And what's cool is these are oral medications. Anytime you talk about diabetes medication management, we have options that are injectable and oral. So this class specifically is oral. Also, we got to know the goal of managing type 2 diabetes is to lower blood glucose levels. So we know DPP-4 inhibitors work in this way. And the big thing to take away is that all DPP-4 inhibitors end in gliptin. For example, citagliptin. Now let's go in deeper and figure out how DPP-4 inhibitors actually work. Anytime you eat a meal, it gets absorbed in your GI tract. During this time, you have these things called incretins that get secreted. They're basically hormones. And there's two incretins that get released, GLP-1 and GIP. And these two hormones help regulate the body's glucose levels. So essentially, they travel throughout the body, the pancreas, the liver, the stomach, and they do three major things. First, they delay gastric emptying, so food stays in your stomach longer. Two, they'll increase insulin production in the pancreas. And three, they'll decrease glucagon production that your liver creates. So overall, all of these functions decrease blood glucose level. We also have to understand that our body is very smart. It has ways to regulate these different pathways. And what happens is when there's too much GLP-1 and GIP, our body has natural DPP-4, which is basically just an enzyme that comes in and cuts up these incretins. So what happens is DPP-4 will break down GLP-1. It'll break down GIP, which will stop it from going to these different body parts. And then it'll stop delaying that gastric emptying. It'll stop increasing insulin. And then it'll stop decreasing glucagon. And this is normal. Our body will constantly try to regulate itself. This is where DPP-4 inhibitors work. So let's say a patient takes citagliptin. Well, we said it's a DPP-4 inhibitor, so it's going to inhibit DPP-4. It's going to block DPP-4. So this medication will block that natural DPP-4. If you block this, it'll stop breaking down GLP-1 and GIP, which means your body will have more and more GLP-1 and GIP, which means you have more of these incretins which will go throughout the body and cause even further delayed gastric emptying, even more increased insulin, even more decrease of glucagon production. So overall, your body has more of this decreased blood glucose regulation. Long story short, this class of medication prevent the breakdown of incretins, which decrease blood glucose in our diabetic patients. Now that we know how DPP-4 inhibitors work, when do we use them? Well, we already said this. They're used in our type 2 diabetic patients and only type 2 diabetic patients. Do not use this for type 1 diabetics. Another thing is that it's not first line use in this patient population. That's reserved for metformin, which we talked in our previous video. Typically, when we're looking at these DPP-4 inhibitors, they're add-on therapy and they're third-line agents. Just because it's third-line agent doesn't mean they're useless. They're actually very useful, and it's another tool in our arsenal that we can use to help patients manage their diabetes. The dosing and adjustments for these medications are very simple. These DPP-4 inhibitors, there's a bunch of them. 
the big two major ones are citagliptin, which is Januvia, and linagliptin, which is Trigenta. There are a couple others. There's saxagliptin and alogliptin. These aren't as popular, and we'll touch on why later. But citagliptin is 100 milligrams by mouth daily. Linagliptin is only 5 milligrams by mouth daily. This class of drug, again, it's very well tolerated. You don't get a lot of side effects like metformin. For example, metformin we talked about has a lot of GI upset, stomach issues. These medications overall are very, very well tolerated. Another neat thing is they're all dosed daily. And that really helps our patients with compliance. It's a lot easier to take one tablet one time a day than multiple times a day. So that's a huge benefit. Some key little notes I want to touch on is that we do see hepatotoxicity in alogliptin specifically, right? So if a patient has liver impairment or their liver is already damaged, we want to avoid alogliptin. If a patient has heart failure, we also want to avoid alogliptin and saxagliptin in these patients because these two DPP-4 inhibitors will exacerbate heart failure symptoms. And then when talking about renal adjustments, we typically want to reduce the dose when a patient has any renal impairment. So if their kidneys aren't filtering it fast enough, except for linagliptin. That's why linagliptin is one of the more popular ones because you don't need to adjust it for renally impaired patients. There are some side effects and drug interactions overall that we need to touch on. The first is they all can cause pancreatitis. This is very rare, but it's something to put on your radar because they increase in cretins, which also stimulate insulin production in the pancreas there's a chance that we do develop pancreatitis. The second thing, which is kind of weird, is some patients taking these DPP-4 inhibitors will have upper respiratory tract infections or symptoms. So basically, when they take it, they'll have these common cold symptoms. The third thing here is arthralgias. For whatever reason, some patients experience joint pain when taking these medications. And then the last thing here is we want to avoid use with GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide. Patients that are taking these GLP-1 agonists should not be taking DPP-4 inhibitors at the same time. The reason is because they all kind of work the same way. One prevents the breakdown of GLP-1, and now you're adding artificial GLP-1 into your system. So you're going to have way too much GLP-1 and have access to way more side effects. But across the board, remember, these class of drugs are very well tolerated. Let's do a quick summary and a short quiz. So first, we talked about DPP-4 inhibitors and how they're used in type 2 diabetes only. We talked about anytime you eat food, your GI tract releases these incretins, which was GLP-1 and GIP. We said we have natural DPP-4, which breaks down these incretins, but when we take DPP-4 inhibitors, it blocks the breakdown of GLP and GIP. So in your system, you have more and more of both of these hormones, and because of that, you get delayed gastric emptying, you have an increase in insulin production, and a decrease in glucagon, and overall, All three of these cause a decrease in blood glucose, which is exactly what we want in our diabetic population. We talked about some side effects. We said how it could cause pancreatitis, even though it's rare. It could cause flu-like symptoms, joint pain. And then we talked about a drug interaction that you cannot use DPP-4 inhibitors with any GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide. So let's do a short quiz to see what we retained. Question one, what is the dosing for citagliptin? Question two, which incretins does DPP-4 inhibitors increase? Question three, which indication is linagliptin used for? Question four, which medication cannot be combined with citagliptin?